never use 10 10 10 fertilizer okay that's a bit of an exaggeration there may be a one in a million chance that that is a good fertilizer for you but the chance is so small that it's almost never the right product to buy. So what is a 10-10-10? Well, that number is the MPK ratio. What it says is that this bag of fertilizer has 10% nitrogen, 10% phosphate, and 10% potash. Potash is a form of potassium. Now note that it's 10% phosphate and 10% potash. It's not 10% phosphorus or 10% potassium but that's a topic for another video we call this a balanced fertilizer because it has equal amounts of all three nutrients now i don't know where the idea of balance came from but i suspect it goes way back to when fertilizer companies were first making products and they said well what does a gardener want nobody knew we hadn't sold fertilizers before so someone came up with the idea Let's make a 10, 10, 10. We'll call it balanced and people will buy it. And they did. They loved the product. When I first started gardening, it was about the only fertilizer you could buy because everybody used a 10, 10, 10. Now it turns out it's not really a balanced fertilizer. I mean, for one reason, plants don't want these nutrients in that ratio. So it's not balanced for plants. But people still like a balanced fertilizer. I mean, who would go out and buy an unbalanced fertilizer? That can't be good for plants. Now, I think people buy the 10-10-10 largely because of habit. They go to the store, they look at all the various fertilizers. They're not really sure which one to buy. Now, let's go with the 10-10-10. I've used it last year. It's got to work. Well, today we're going to explain why this fertilizer is almost never the right fertilizer for you. Why is it the wrong fertilizer? I'm going to give you three good reasons. The first one is that plants do not use these nutrients in equal amounts. They don't want a balanced fertilizer. What do plants want? Well, plants use these nutrients in a 3-1-2 ratio. Three times as much nitrogen as the phosphate. The potash is somewhere between the two. If you use a 10-10-10 and you put on the right amount of phosphate, the middle number, your plants are starving for nitrogen. On the other hand, if you put on the right amount of nitrogen, you're giving them three times too much phosphate. Now you may say, well, so what? You put a little extra on there. Can't harm them? Well, it does. Actually, phosphate can become toxic to plants. You put too much on the soil and it washes away into rivers and streams and causes algae blooms and fish deaths. It is a real environmental problem. Too much phosphate in the soil can also tie up iron and manganese. That means your plants aren't getting enough iron because you put on too much phosphate. The third problem is that too much phosphate stops the mycorrhizal fungi from associating with your plant roots. That means plants have to work much harder to get their nutrients. That's not good for plant growth or your soil. So too much phosphate is a real problem. No matter how you apply a 10-10-10, you can't get the right amount of nitrogen and phosphate because plants want it in a ratio of 3-1-2. Two. The second reason 10, 10, 10 is no good has to do with the speed at which these nutrients travel through the soil profile. So let's look at this example. The first year we take a 10, 10, 10 and we put it on our soil. We water it in, rain comes along, and what happens? Well, the nitrogen moves through the soil profile very quickly. The phosphate stays at the surface. In a whole year, it's only going to travel a fraction of an inch into the soil. It stays near the surface. Potassium is about halfway between the two, so it does move down the soil profile, but not nearly as fast as nitrogen. So it comes time to fertilize again. We put on some more 10, 10, 10. The nitrogen goes through the soil. The potassium moves down the soil halfway. And the phosphate gets stuck at the top of the soil. Well, you can see what's happening here. Every time you add that fertilizer, you build up the amount of phosphate in the top layer of soil. 
That's where the roots are. That's where the phosphate becomes toxic to roots. Because of the way these nutrients travel through soil, we have to apply a lot less phosphate than nitrate. The third reason I don't like 10, 10, 10 is that it's a bad way to fertilize your garden. If your garden needs fertilizer, the only way to know what to add is to get a soil test done. Now, if you haven't got a soil test, then you should assume that your soil has enough phosphate and enough potassium, provided things are growing fairly well. The one nutrient that may be short is nitrogen. So if you don't know what deficiencies you have because you haven't done a soil test, just put on nitrogen. You should be using a 10 0, 0 or Take an organic approach and just put on compost and manure every year and don't use fertilizer at all. But going out and buying a 10, 10, 10 and just spreading it around, that's the wrong approach. So what do I recommend for fertilizer? Well, in my ornamental beds, I don't fertilize. All the plant material stays there. That adds a bit of nutrients back into the soil. I do mulch with organic matter. I let dead leaves fall to the ground. So they're getting a bit of nutrients, but my ornamental beds do pretty good. So I know I don't need to put fertilizer on them. A little manure or compost every year, that's great. An inch or two, that's all you need. Now in a vegetable garden, you might want to add a bit more nitrogen because we want these vegetables to grow quick and produce a lot of food. But add some nitrogen, but don't worry about the other nutrients unless you've done a soil test and you know what's missing. The purpose of fertilizing is to replace the nutrients that are missing in soil. It's not to feed the plants. We don't feed plants. We replace the nutrients that are missing in soil. If you don't know which nutrients you're deficient in, you don't know which fertilizer to buy. But you can be sure it's not a 10, 10, 10. Now you might be wondering, is synthetic fertilizer actually safe? Should I be using something like miracle Grow, which some people hate, and they think it's horrible for plants? Well, if you want to know the truth about that question, have a look at this video right here. Happy Garden.